Okay. Um, so Linda, thank you for joining. Um, I do have a lot of things that would have been intended to be on the agenda were a very visual kind of nature of um, kind of a work session to do review the survey, the statewide survey and the um, committee guide. So maybe we'll just kind of summarize where those are at and then push it out to have it be a call to action, like just provide your feedback virtually and um, after this. So I also okay. I also put on here um, as a housekeeping item, like I, I noticed I was getting some emails on who should be getting invites to this committee. So I wanted to like review the committee roster. Um, and so Linda, do you plan to attend moving forward or are you just popping on for today? No, I would like I would like to attend moving forward. Okay, perfect. I did add you on here. So then I'll make sure you're on my email list as well. Appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then I think the other changes I did with Jessica Walter is now on the committee list. And then I noticed that Beth um, Christopher is still on here. So I've taken her off just as a, for your end, um, Hannah, if that update needs to give, be given to Heidi or anyone else. Okay, so I don't have any due dates or reminders coming up. Oh, when we have someone joining, I'll just pause before fully diving in. Hello, Jessica. Um, I don't have your audio, but we've been having interesting issues, so. All right, can you try again, see if we can hear you? I can keep moving on. Um, just going to do a quick review and update of what we have on the agenda, and then hopefully have people provide feedback offline because we had quite a few people who couldn't make it today. So the first one was the evaluation survey that was sent out as kind of a free focus of the year, trying to figure out what needs and areas our committee might be able to help with. So I have that result so far. I actually did get quite a few. Um, responses, I think we're at 20 right now, and that, you know, went out to everyone, even those who aren't actively in this committee. So I wanted to just look at that for one second. Let me switch my screen share over to there. Oh, that's the wrong one. Hold on. Next, next. I'm not good at Zoom. We'll just do something in the back end quick. Okay. So hopefully you're now seeing Survey Monkey. Is that right? Cool. Okay. So this is just um, feeling out there again what areas from the whole landscape of all of the grantees in 21st and what needs might be rising to the top. So, like I said, we had around 1920 completed um, surveys and it's still open. So maybe we'll kind of revisit this again. But the things that rose to the top as um, areas of need have been local de objectives, um, developing, changing them, measuring them, et cetera. I think that probably is correlated to our GAPRA measures and the need to only have a few local ones that don't really duplicate that. So that would be interesting to kind of touch base on again. Um, oops, sorry, data organization and management and then 21 APR reporting are at the top. So that's just more so to take forward and we can have discussion, maybe in a full group of what that support can look like. Um, and then, like I said, it was a mix of those who are regularly attending and who are just a grantee, maybe attending a different committee. So that 
we did get more representation of, of people who are on the committee, what their, what their needs are as well. Um, and then the reason people either choose if you're on the committee to attend is to kind of gain tools and resources to make evaluation, evaluation easier. So that really will connect back to our goal as a committee to make sure we're actually giving enough tools um, to be helpful for, for everyone. And then the rest of the survey was really asking for best practice approaches and things. I won't go into these at all right now, um, but the committee guide is also on the agenda for today. And so this kind of anecdotal best practice, tips, tricks, and gathering all of that from different grantees, I kind of have that in a, a little spot in the um, committee guide to just kind of be a catch-all for all of that. So. Um, I think maybe we'll just review this again when we have a fuller group and just then brainstorm possibly on what support in these areas, maybe actually get more detailed information about specifically what people might need help with in relation to local objectives and data management and that kind of stuff. Are there any questions or comments from Linda or Jessica? No. Good. Okay, so back to the agenda. Um, we also wanted to review the statewide survey template, like the questions that are provided um, that's due every year around January um, and making sure that it lines up and is consistent. So we had a few things come up at the last call, um, knowing that we were going to review the survey today. So reviewing questions 10 and 11, and I'll pull up the survey here in just a second. Um, and then clarity around when reporting happens for new grantees, because you always are a year behind on summer, um, and making sure that just when you're updating the survey every year, that those, those school year dates and the summer dates are accurate and reflecting that. So let me switch that screen real quick as well. <clears throat> Okay, so I highlighted question 10 and 11 that referenced that first thing. And so this is really about the switch over from the GEPA measures from the kind of regular attendee, which was the 30 day threshold into now these hourly bands. So I think, however that visually can get represented in a survey format of if it needs to be broken down like each band or less, I, I feel like Vic might have the most insight on this. So maybe we'll seek input and, and have that be called out and asked for input um, off of this meeting time. Because now there isn't really a cutoff between who you report on and who you don't. We report on all of the students now and then they're just divvied up into those hourly bands. So I don't exactly know what information is helpful to have on you know the state side. So um, Maybe we'll just hold off on that one. And then beyond that, I didn't actually have too many other tweaks or anything that I thought were super relevant. A lot of this has stayed the same year after year. So it's just maybe in the narrative kind of intro section of the survey, which I don't have um, in here. It can be very, very clear that what year you are reported on. And question nine, like when you are responding specifically to school year, specifically to summer and making sure that those those match. So I feel like we've maybe gotten the initial input, but I maybe would put out a call to anyone else who has the time to review it and can um, provide their input and then hand it off to whoever, whoever actually updates this, if it's you guys at Iowa After School Alliance or if it's Vic and all of that, so. I don't know, Hannah, if you have any insight on how that process should look or go or any plans of action, how that committee can work on it. Yeah, so um, I mean, it, it's distributed through SurveyMonkey and so we could go in and edit it whenever. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, Heidi will be the one that yeah. updates that. Okay, so I feel like I just don't have any specific edits because I would want to push it out again to everyone to provide their input and um, specifically with those 
less than 30 days and switching that language around to know how it's used is important. So I think that would be helpful for Vic to comment on as well. So I will open it up. Um, I can send out this kind of Google Doc version. This is obviously like informal and me just copying over the question. So um, it is the same that it has, as it appears in SurveyMonkey. It's just a way to edit it in a different format. So I can send out this version of it so that people can have the time to maybe sift through. There's all of these other questions that are like, check all the out that apply. So I don't know also if in the results, if there's things that pop up in the other category often, like if it, if we should be adding, being adding to the list of items, that might be something to consider too, if like consistently, let's see, like in professional development is the one I have on the screen. If there's a consistent other area that pops up, maybe we would want to add it to the list or that type of re review might also be helpful um, to do collectively. Otherwise, I felt like the rest of the check all that apply, like a lot of those questions are pretty straightforward when they're just a checkbox system or um, all of that. So my follow up from this will be to to either send to you, Hannah, or just send it out directly to the committee, um, whichever makes sense to, to then ask for that feedback and maybe send a separate message to Vic on how he thinks that should be represented for the attendance. Okay, so the last thing that I'll try to just keep also condensed to hopefully have more comments and feedback on from the full committee is the committee guide, which we kind of really wanted this last session to be just pushing it over the final finish line because it's just been floating out there for quite a while. We've had um, different drafts going on and, you know, wanting to be having a guide for anyone in the grantee network um, to just get some of the the tools that we discuss in this committee, even if they're not attending on a frequent basis. So I feel like we've I've revised it to a certain degree that it could probably just be good enough and move on, but I do want everyone to have the chance to provide any input. And um, it's not like it would probably just sit on a shelf and never get edited again. I feel like it would be relevant to have up and tweak, especially as we gather what needs the network has for different tools or different best practice tips. So the gist of this committee guide is that there's the summary mission statement and goals of the committee, who you can contact for different components. Then we have kind of expectations of what this committee would ask of participants and what you should be able to expect of attending the committee. So. Part of this ended up being that we would break down each of the meetings into different focus areas. So April was to review the statewide survey, which somewhat somewhat check off that, but we'll have to probably return to that. Um, June, looking at the statewide report, that should be the next meeting and kind of getting any comments on the evaluation timeline. August, we'd be preparing to dive into APR and helping refine, refine any templates, et cetera. So um, that would be helpful, I think, for anyone who is deciding maybe to just pop in on one committee session if they are wanting to just really specifically get help on APR entry, data entry, et cetera. So that is something we'd want to push out for everyone to see, I think, for sure. Um, then the rest, one other big section of this is just kind of laying the land of what are the requirements of evaluation for a 21st century grantee, the GEPR measures. Um, I pulled this table from one of Vic's emails, so I hope that's substantial enough of a reference point. Um, APR, a little bit of that background, some tips and tricks that came up, like making sure you submit after each individual page that you have to move from in the system because otherwise on VIX end, it doesn't show that you've completed it. So just trying to hone in on some of those tips and tricks. Local evaluation, um, just kind of the bullet points on that. Okay, and then 
a list of those other kind of various miscellaneous reporting things that go on, like the community partnership list, professional development log, statewide survey. Um, so that is kind of just seeing all of it in one lens scope of what is all of the evaluation things that are entailed with 21st century grant. A timeline. And then the, the rest of it, this is where it's kind of lingered on in this guide is just what to include as far as best practices. So a lot of it is going to link back to the actual Iowa After School Alliance webpage because it has got a lot of the resources that we've already created as a committee, like templates. Um, also, there is kind of a best practice link that is curated different articles or different documents that is in that 21st century website as well. So for the most part, that's what's here. There are just some helpful images when you think about objectives, best practices of logic models, smart objectives. So I don't know, this is kind of just my curation of things. And so there's definitely, it's not the end all be all and I'm not necessarily an expertise in this field. So this is really where I would love to have any input of things that you're using in a district or locally um, in, a, in a nonprofit of how you approach evaluation. And then this really last part is all of these survey comments from, this is from like, I think 2019 when we last did the survey. So I hope to kind of either update the survey that's currently active that went out to the entire network and just put in these comments about how people approach these different buckets of evaluation areas like managing data, capturing stories, et cetera. So that's all just kind of anecdotal how, how people approach it. And then just a, a bunch of links that certainly aren't comprehensive, but this is where I would leave it off to anyone if you have anything to add to any additional best practice resources, links, research articles. Um, yeah, so that, I think, I think we're almost there. It's like the last call to kind of add any input. So this will be, I think, sent out similarly to that statewide survey and just that's the call to action is just to provide any last feedback input um, so that this can get just sent out to the whole network and live on the 21st century page as well to give people access. That is in a nutshell all I, all I have. So thank you for sticking with the kind of abridged version of all of this because I didn't want to necessarily dive in fully deeply if we don't have the full group with us. So is there anything else on your end, you know, that you think would be important to touch on? Um, I don't think so. Okay. Okay. So I, I don't know. I, I have the recording because I'm recording on my end. So I can just send over that in the documents. And then I feel like I don't have the full maybe committee list. I can. I, I just want to make sure I have clarity. Do you want me to just go ahead and send it out or should it go through your filter first of I would go ahead and send it to Heidi. Okay, perfect. Um, just so that, because I don't know all the boxes that need to be checked, yeah. <laughs> um, so that we're sure all the boxes are checked. Okay, cool. Do that. So, thanks, Jessica. I've also added you on our committee roster. I don't you might have missed that. Um, and then, are you getting the emails? Because I feel like you are on my email list, but maybe not. Okay, you are now. Sorry, your audio is a little bit distorted, but I think I heard you say yes, that you're getting the email. Okay, cool. And I'm Maddie Linda as well. So I'll make sure to clue Heidi in on that too. I know you you already communicated with her, Jessica. But yep. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Alrighty. I'm going to stop recording and we should be good.